Um, if anybody wants to speak, I'll be happy to put them, I'll give you a mic. If you guys have any questions, comments, or whatever you'd like to do, I'll be more than happy to give you a mic. Uh, again, this is for all educational purposes only, not for, for not for financial advice. And uh, I'd like to um, really get started on, well, first, before I get started, I'd like to say, I've been, I I skipped this the past couple of weeks. I was on uh, Nanimo Trader, uh, his Trader Punks. He had me on his show, and a lot of great guys on that show, and we had a great conversation. So um, I want to thank him for having me on again. And uh, if anybody who doesn't know who he is, give his um, uh, profile, uh, check out his profile, give him a follow. And if you're interested in learning more about uh, – Theta, it's, they have a, it's, it's everything's trader punks. They do like a lot of technical analysis on certain things and uh, a lot of information, a lot of smart people over there. So, uh, if you guys want to check it out, check it out. He's a good guy. All right. So May 1st, the date for the edge cloud launch, uh, big, 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 big deal, big deal. Uh, finally the edge nodes and the edge cloud come out of beta. And Mitch Lou put out a post that I, I had reposted asking the community to get 10,000 uh, elite edge nodes. And he asked us, where are you at when I need you the most? So there must be some significance to the 10,000, uh, or I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the 10,000 uh, elite edge nodes running. Um, probably something to do, I would gather, I don't know this, but I would gather, I'm sure it has to do with the partnerships and where they're at, because he did say, it would, it would mean one of the largest uh, distributed networks of GPUs for AI video and other compute jobs in the world. And that's huge when you think about it. Uh, AI, it's been around, um, but there's a lot of, I guess, kind of like that, a lot of just working over the years. And now this thing's popped off with NVIDIA and uh, uh, Grok. OpenAI has been around for, uh, I guess, maybe about a year and a half, two years now. I don't know the real time frame on that. Um, Hugging Face, all the companies on there looking to run AI models, LLMs, uh, machine learning, whatever, all those jobs they're doing, um, this is really starting to fruition. And um, I think we have great momentum going into not only this crypto bull market with Bitcoin, who knows if that's going to pop off before um, the having because and Joe's going to get into this uh, probably a little bit later, but you know, I don't think Bitcoin's ever hit an all-time high before the having. So I think with these ETFs and from things I've been reading, I have not done any research on how much Bitcoin is left on exchanges or anything like that. But from what I've been reading, I don't think there's much left on the exchanges. So uh, that's going to fuel a lot for Bitcoin, and hopefully. Uh, Bitcoin jumps, especially beating the all-time high before the halving. Man, I think you're going to see there's a high probability. I don't know this because you know I'm not giving financial advice, but there's probably a high shot that people are going to look at alts and say, "Wow, Bitcoin's doing well." Throw some money into alts. But um, that's just kind of my take on what that would look like. But getting back to the elite edge nodes, uh, Mitch also said he's ushering a new era of AI computing, the best of the cloud decentralized. And Jay Long. I uh, had a post, he posted, heads down developing with uh, one of the most advanced decentralized software platforms in edge computing for video, generative AI, and more. This is just great news all around. Uh, I think they got, they're got they lining their ducks up, they're ready to go, and get this thing out of beta and really see what this looks like it's going to do. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting also that, you know, <clears throat> the 500,000... T fuel for the what I like to call fully loaded edge node elite booster. They call it the elite booster. I put a little twist on it, but I think it's going to be huge. I think you know when you have, I don't know if it's can called profit sharing or you, well, I guess it would be you get a cut out of the data centers. I think that's going to be wild to see once people realize, companies realize, small businesses, big businesses, uh, individual investors. Are, I think they're going to be really interested in trying to get a piece of that action. And if you think about it, <clears throat> T-Fuel, a number of weeks ago, and I don't have the number of weeks in front of me, um, but, you know, they, you could get a 10K Elite Edge node for like 300 bucks. Now it's approximately, it's a little under now, it's like $900 just to get 10,000 T-Fuel. So 
you know, you put 500,000 T fuel at approximately nine cents. I know it's a little bit lower now, but you're, you're talking 45 grand for that. So the average people are already getting priced out of that. And, you know, the early people who got in on that, I think will, uh, there's a high potential that they're really going to be able to, you know, really capitalize on that. And I think that's really, really cool. It lets people who understood the technology, it lets, it allows, you know, it allows for a lot of things that probably may not be able to be in reach for um, the average person to get into <clears throat> when this bull market takes off. And even now, I mean, 45,000 for half a million T fuel, um, it's going up. And from the way it looks, you know, hopefully that trajectory continues that way and, you know, just keeps smoking along, which would be great. Uh, to parlay into that, you know, I post a lot of things that Elon Musk says and what's going on with NVIDIA. And I feel that's important because, you know, I know I spoke on this uh, on a couple spaces ago that I had, but it's really coming to light now when you see they're launching this. You see what NVIDIA is doing. There's no slowdown. In fact, there's, from what I've been reading, there's, you know, there's actually, you can't, it's really hard to get the NVIDIA hardware. Um, I think the H100, so I think there's still a backlog on them. They, I, I read actually a little bit before this. It, it may have freed up a little bit, but um, I'm not sure You know how much that really freed up. They're hard to get. So I think parlaying that type of technology and having the relationship where Google and NVIDIA just has the partnership for uh, 2B and 7B models, which gives great exposure to Theta, and running those models, there's a lot of companies on Hugging Face that runs those models. And Hugging Face had tweeted, or there was a, a, um, a post on that. Uh, so, you know, all this is networking. All of this is coming together, like, as in a web, kind of what, not kind of, it's exactly what, you know, uh, I believe, and I'm not speaking for them, but from what uh, Mitch and Jay were talking about, about, you know, you have these nodes set up, and it's just a web, and they all interconnect. The same thing, you know, that the hardware, the software, it's all coming together. Elon Musk coming out again, another, uh, uh, I've seen quite a few posts just this week alone. Again, AI is growing at 10x month over month. That's crazy, you know, and obviously, you know, that's not going to be like that forever. But for that kind of momentum coming into this, this bull market, for Bitcoin and for all for the for certain alts, uh, Theta being one of them, I believe, uh, is really going to, I think, set the stage for these companies who have really been working, really been doing well, and now coming out and putting out their um, their product out for real use case, out of beta and ready to go. Um, I don't want to interrupt this, but anybody who would like to maybe add a comment or ask a question, feel free to raise your hand. We can get you the mic. Um, Elon Musk said we are on the edge of the biggest technology revolution that has ever existed and I believe that I mean not just because the richest guy in the world says that he has the knowledge he knows what's going on but you just see you can see if you just read what's going on in AI you pick up or just Google what's going on in AI NVIDIA Google NVIDIA Google anything that's happening right hardware for and just the growth is crazy. Uh, NVIDIA's stock price is going through the roof. I know there's a lot of people saying it's a bubble. I'm not going to say it's a bubble. I'm not going to say it's not a bubble. What I'm going to say is there's a lot of momentum going into uh, this AI. And there's a lot of need for hardware and everything else that doesn't seem to be slowing. And when Elon Musk says 10, it's 10xing month over month, I believe it. There's other articles that I had uh, mentioned uh, a couple spaces ago that... You know, there's 700,000 megawatt data centers being built in, I think it's Kuwait, uh, 500 megawatts, 100 megawatt data centers being built over the rest of the world that people who aren't really in this space don't even really understand what's happening. And taking the hardware and software out of this, man, it's going to be wild to think how much is this is going to change the world. Uh, jobs are going to change. Just using your smartphone every day is going to change. Um it's, it's going to be wild. It's going to be, it's already happening when Sora comes out. I mean, I think it's going to come completely, not I think, it's going to completely disrupt Hollywood. Yeah, I don't think you need these huge um, studios anymore when you can just sit there and really think of like a scenario you want in your head, type it down, and it gives you your whole shot video um, really on demand. 
And I don't know how long that takes to render down or what that looks like, because I haven't used it. I think Sora is in, obviously it's in, um, it's in test phase. I know they handed it out to a lot of people. I don't, some people, if you look on X have, you know, showed some videos on what they've done and it's really incredible. It's really, really incredible. So I think, I think one is going to change the world Two is for us stated people and the edge people who are into the edge cloud and into investing and things like that, Theta is going to be running these jobs. Now, I'm not saying Theta is going to be run all the jobs. That would be great if they did. But, you know, if they're on and they're able to run even, I don't know, who knows, 10% of them, 15% of the jobs, even just getting started, I mean, I think that's just astronomical when you think about it. There was um, a... Uh, a thing I had seen for, and it's it's in one of my posts that um, Samsung said just on just on one phone alone in a year they're they're getting twelve billion hits, and that's going to be all AI generated. So just imagine that on your phone when you want to look at a pair of glasses, you just tap on the glasses. You don't have to Google it or look it up or search for it. You just tap on it and it pops up whatever you want to get. So uh, all this is going to be done through AI, as we know. Data is going to be a huge part of that. I'd love to see what these partnerships are going to look like whenever they're allowed to speak about them. I don't know if they're allowed to speak about them now or not. I'm assuming they're not. There's probably a lot of NDAs involved. That's probably why, you know, a lot of it's, um, you know, broad saying, yes, you know, we need the 10,000 edge nodes. We'd like to have them. It's, you know, uh, it was important to, to Mitch. There's no question that was important to him. And, when, you know, CEO says, I need you more now than I, or I forget what the exact words. It was almost like, I need you now more than ever, or, oh, where are you now when I need you the most? That's what it was. Uh, he needed it, and the community provided. And we got where we needed to be, and I think it was really important that magic number, whatever that magic number means, hope, I'm sure we'll hear about it uh, sometime down the road. But uh, it definitely seems to be important and pertinent to what's happening and to moving this along. And really scaling this up and the great thing about it is unless you're investing directly into the edge node program where you stake ten thousand all the way up to a half a million um it's free the download's free right and it can run on uh a computer that doesn't need to be jacked up with all kinds of uh computing power you can use your own uh computer at home and be part of the network so it doesn't even cost anybody anything and then you get rewards in return for it so they really thought this out. This is really strong. May 1st is just great. I remember when, uh, in 2021, when um, <clears throat> they just started running up to Mainnet 3.0. There was all the hype for it. And I think it went from, and there's some traders on here. Joe, you're one of them. Nanimo, you probably know the dates better than me uh, on how this went. But I remember watching it, and it was like March, uh, probably maybe mid February, March. I think, was the release April 1st or was it May 1st? I forget what it was. But anyway, there's this couple months and it just ran up. And everybody knows they're up to 16. And that's not what I'm getting at. So I'm getting to that point in a second. But it ran up, right? And they had a lot of momentum. And I think we are in a different spot, not technically with Theta. I'm just talking about as the market in general because AI is going through the roof. And knowing... The price jumped dramatically when I what it was I, I don't think it was twenty minutes and it it, it jumped uh, after Mitch put his email or his post out and people are, are getting it the words getting out and it's going up more uh, since then so I think you know there's a there's a pretty good shot that people and this is not about talking about the price what I'm saying is the momentum's there and as the momentum happens and you have the Bitcoin happening and as I said a little bit earlier before some of you guys got on that, you know, Bitcoin hasn't uh, peaked or had an all-time high before the halving. If that happens before the halving and this AI comes out and there's altcoins, I think this could be massive very quickly. You know, just just overall in general in the market, in the crypto market, where those prices would go, I would have no idea. I mean, it depends how much momentum is there and excitement and, and funds going through. But I think it uh, it could be it, things could happen very very quickly, and even after May first, if it runs up well, and people are like, "Man, I thought it would run up more." Just think, we have May first, and I don't know the technical side of this, but I know Theta is hosting uh, up until I think um, 
the second half of the year. They're going to host the edge node. So they're going to release the elite edge node boosters, uh, the 500,000 plus the second half of the year. And I think you're going to see a lot of movement in between that time because you get to work, you know, Theta, I believe, and I'm speculating all of this, so I don't have any real information on this. This is just what I'm trying to read and put together that, you know, they're going to see how well this is going to take off and, and still continue these partnerships they have behind closed doors. And you'll see, you know, when they release the 500,000 edge nodes where people can start getting those additional rewards for being a part of the data center and contributing all, you know, um, putting their collateral up, putting their, their compute power up. I think you're going to see a, a big change in T-Fuel as well. And T-Fuel is changing now, which is great. So uh, I don't think for where we're at now, uh, we can complain, but I think it can only get so much better because it, it's, you know, from the past week, NVIDIA, Google, and then Hugging Face and Google, and they're all intertwined. They're all doing the same kind of work, and they're all trying to figure out how to make this faster, cheaper, and smarter. Right. So the beauty about all of this is no one's competing against anybody. Right. Data is not competing against NVIDIA. NVIDIA is not competing against Google. Hugging Face and competing against Data. They're all in this together, all trying to make this work. And I, they get it. Right. And um, Jensen from NVIDIA, the CEO from NVIDIA, had even said, he said, it's not a chip problem anymore, guys. It's a software. Software is going to going to help this along. And when you think about that and you think about the software for Theta, it's just it's just really, really, really great. So we finally got the price movement in Theta uh, to start <laughs> by no means. So I think I think it's obvious. I think it's just beginning. But, you know, that's just my thoughts. It's just beginning. And um, this hasn't even come out of beta yet. Partnerships haven't even been mentioned yet. I did hear some interesting things on um on X that somebody, I don't know who posted, I should have wrote it down, but I didn't because I think I saw it today in enough time. I was running around today, but um, somebody thinks that one of the validators are Apple, which would be really, really cool if that name was ever mentioned uh, soon. I mean, it's going to be mentioned at some point, of course, but uh, I think it'd be really, really cool if it was mentioned during um, this run up to either May 1st or a little after May 1st, but I'm sure all this is going to come out eventually. Uh, they have their strategy on how they're going to release it, and I think they're, I think they're releasing a lot of cool stuff now. So, and letting you know the companies, or I'm sorry, letting the public know about what's going on. And you know, I the only thing I want to add before I start getting into just the the nodes and 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 talking a little more about that and bring Joe on that I think it's going to be interesting to see. Um, what it would look like when all the validators are named, you know, everything's up and running. We're in the fall. And typically from what I understand is the bull market runs. Joe called it, by the way, simplistic Joe called it, uh, uh, November of 23 was the low <clears throat> in Bitcoin. And I believe it was probably, and somebody could correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't follow charts that closely where I would know, uh, the exact month, but I did follow the Bitcoin on it because it was, it was just there. I think uh, T fuel was pretty was pretty low, and Theta itself was pretty low at that time. So I think a lot of things had bottomed at that point, and it went. But you know, this thing has from what from what uh, the typical markets have run have run all the way into twenty twenty five. But I kind of wonder uh, what it would what it would look like when. You know, I think <clears throat> I think the AI. I think a lot. I I, I don't know this. Uh, it's speculating, of course, not financial advice. But I think a lot of altcoins are going to get shook out, meaning the ones that are real meme coins, the ones that really don't have much. I think you'll see those, you know, pump and dump, and they may never come back. I don't know. Like, you know, are we going to see a um, a market where you know, say, come twenty twenty five. And it's, you know, early spring or late fall and early 2025, or I'm sorry, late winter in 2025. And you see, um, you see the alts pull back, but you don't have those 90% drops anymore because there's real tech behind this at that point. I don't know, you know, I don't know if you see it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I mean, maybe, maybe it runs so high and I'm making this up. I'm not, I'm not saying these numbers at all, but I'm just saying if theta were just to get to $300, 
right? Because of the, it just went ballistic, right? With everything that came out. And maybe it pulls back to between 50 and 75 and stays there. Maybe you never see something below 50 anymore in theta. I don't know. You know, it's just things I'm thinking about because how could you have a technology that would run with the technology? It's the biggest thing in the world right now. And then have an enormous pullback, like it's not worth it anymore. Right. So I kind of think in those terms as well, what that might look like, but you never know. I mean, the, the, these cryptos are a crazy market. Um, I think, I think the bull market and Bitcoin, I think there'll be a lot of money that might, I think there's a money, a lot of money on the sidelines right now that are looking to, um, to put their money elsewhere. I mean, you see these CEOs, what Jamie Dimon, um, Zuckerberg, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. There's a couple others that pulled out, um, a shit ton of money and you know, is that, that's going to go in. That's probably, I would speculate some of that's going to go into Bitcoin. I mean, people think they're building bunkers and everything else. Maybe they are. I mean, there's plans on them. Who knows what's going on with them, but I'm sure there's money going in, into Bitcoin and some other things into alts. Cause although, although the marketing strategy, um, uh, community wide, I'm not saying this is myself. Cause I've always said, I'm not worried about the more, and I'm really not worried about the marketing strategy for, for data. Um, that, you know, these guys know what's going on. They're not stupid. You know, um, these guys have the inside knowledge on everything. And I was discussing something with somebody the other day. And I said, you know, maybe the market caps just aren't high enough for them to get in yet. Right. Because if they're like, you know, they don't care about price. If they're going to buy Bitcoin at $60,000, $80,000, $100,000, Michael Saylor said he'll never stop buying Bitcoin. They don't care about the price because they care about the, 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 the technology behind it. They don't care if an elite edge node is going to cost them forty five thousand dollars, which it is now. That's nothing for them. You know, I have no idea where T fuel is going to go. I'm making this number up just to make a point. If T fuel went to what ten dollars, what would that be? Ten times? I'm on the calculator. Ten times? That'd be five million bucks, right? They don't care if they spend five million bucks for um, uh, for an edge node. Because one is they know they're getting something back out of it and it's not a lot of money for them, right? It's just not for the long-term play of it. But you never know how it's going to work out. So anyway, those are the things I was kind of looking at. Um, the generative AI is revolutionary in the retail industry. NVIDIA came out and said that. Uh, I think it was, I posted that this week, maybe last week, but it was. I think it was this week. So all these guys know where this is going. They all talk. The Zuckerbergs, the the um, Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon hates Bitcoin, but they sure buy it or they're into it. They help the ETFs. Um, they know Jenny Johnson from um, Fidelity. Oh, I'm sorry, from Franklin Templeton. She knows. She's named T Fuel. They all know. So you know, maybe they're not looking to get in at beta testing because I get it. Let it play out a little while. But I think I think it's huge. And on top of that, the staking, right? Ha approximately. Half of all the theta is staked. I think, what, 38% of T-Fuel stake. Yeah, there's inflation. And there's a lot going on with that. But that's still a lot when you think about it. And, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see how all this plays out. Um, and, again, not to repeat it, but I'm just going to repeat it one last time. A 10K lead edge node was 300 bucks a few weeks ago. Maybe a month or so ago. Maybe, I don't know how many weeks. But a, a, number, of month, a number of weeks ago, it was, 10, it was about 300 bucks. Now it's 900 bucks. Um, there might be some pullback, but those days of $300 um, 10KT fuel, I think, or it might be gone for a while. I don't know, though, uh, for the way this is running and the way people seem to like it. So I know Joe put out, Simplistic Joe, he put out uh, some nice charts on uh, what he thought Theta was going to look like and what the charts are saying. What do you think about it, Joe? And oh, by the way, this is, this is for educational purposes only. This is not financial <laughs> advice. So don't take and yeah. go run into the bank after you hear Joe speak. But, you know, he has a lot of information. He tells you what, you know, how to read charts and educate people on what it may or may not look like. So, Gotcha. Well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here, taking your valuable time to be here. Also, uh, very important, if you're, if you're on your phone, <clears throat> I don't know what it's like on the if you're on your PC, but if you're on your phone and you hit uh, that little heart at the bottom, uh, there's a hand that'll pop up. And the reason why I say that, 
everyone here has something, you know, some knowledge, some valuable to say. Um, anyway, we'd love to hear from you. You know, uh, Joe and I don't want to, you know, take up the whole thing, but the f I am, and then next, I wanted to piggyback <clears throat> Joe on Joe with what he was saying about the Theta team. And uh, one of the things that, first of all, they're big collaborators. I mean, they're, you know, they're type of neighbor that if you ever needed something, you know, you could go over there, you know, and get some help. Uh, and secondly, well, there's a lot of different things. You know, they're very conservative. Uh, they don't overhype anything. If you look at other, not to mention any, but if you look at other altcoins, you, you guys know, if you're on X for a while, you know the ones that are very hyped up, the, the, you know, the community, uh, you know, there's things that are put out that are not necessarily true. But with Theta, I mean, you know, they're almost on the opposite side. So Joe was, I think, very, very spot on earlier when he said, you know, we were talking about, well, you know, what's the new, you know, edge node, so on and so forth. Yeah, there could be news, you know, coming out at the, at the right time, at the right place. Also, uh, according to, this is Mitch saying it, uh, it was a, a number of months ago, but they were literally set up to, uh, and let me uh, mention this, it was pre-having, before the having, uh, the last having, but... Uh, COVID hit, and for whatever reason, they were, um, well, I didn't even say that, on Coinbase, to be listed, I'm sorry, to be listed on Coinbase, and for whatever reason, they were, you know, that didn't work out, and just that, I know, man, I've been, you know, tore up in the comments about uh, Coinbase not really necessary, that's true, but a lot of people want it very simple, that's why the Bitcoin spot ETFs, are taking off so great. People can make a, you know, a, a, what, a 10-minute phone call, maybe a five-minute phone call to their exchange or get on there and do it themselves, you know, and be involved in uh, Bitcoin, for example. And Coinbase just, you know, makes it so much simpler, you know, at least for the American market, okay? And I'm telling you, we would pop 3 to $5 uh, as low as we are now and as much positivity, and, and I don't think FOMO is really hit. If there was a gauge on FOMO, having lived through these markets, this the third one starting 2017 when I started playing around this, uh, I think from um, 1 to 100, 100 being full out FOMO, <laughs> I think we're at a, I don't know, I don't even know if we're at a 10 yet. Uh, to tell you the truth, that's what really burns up the market. And when that'll happen, uh, depends on which happens first. You know, we break all time high in Bitcoin or, you know, we go through the halving. And, uh, I think a lot of these altcoins, you know, will follow, um, you know, Bitcoin, uh, up, up and away, so to speak. And also another thing that Joe said, all these rich guys, they don't want to be, you know, at the country club, um, you know, on the golf course, the different parties, and these other high net worth people. It's their ego. They have, you know, as big of egos as any, you know, uh, pro athlete or, you know, actor or, you know, whomever. And uh, the Bezos, Zuckerbergs, Jamie Dimon, Warren Buffett, you know, selling millions and millions of shares for, well, all together, billions and billions of dollars. Uh, I don't know, I think it's a real safe bet that they're trying to front run the market before the having. Because I'm sure they have small teams, uh, personal investment teams for them, and you know they do. Just like they have tax teams and you know audit teams and stuff uh, that are breaking all this down for them and say, hey, you know, this stuff could double, triple, and you'll never see this price again, 21 million, a finite, um, you know, asset, the only finite, you know, uh, pretty much the only finite uh, asset on, on earth. But um, anyway, I don't want to ramble off. If anyone else uh, has anything to say, you know, please, you know, raise that little hand. We'll let you in. And Joe, then, you, know, it's, you, you know, it's yeah. interesting, Joe. I It's funny you say that because <clears throat> I heard um, – a interview with Sailor, and he said, 
you know, a lot of people, he actually said, said something, that, I'm paraphrasing, so it's taken a lot of context, but he, he mentioned something to the fact that why would you buy Bitcoin all in one shot? And he said you can create, like, a bot, right? And your bot can buy small increments of Bitcoin day over day, day and it doesn't drive the price up immediately, right? And exactly. I'm sure a lot of them are doing that. And on top of that, you know, <clears throat> again, I said a little bit earlier, but from what I've been seeing on X, and I haven't done any research on my own on this, so I can't speak to what it really looks like. Um, there's not much Bitcoin left on the exchanges from what I understand. So, you know, they're, we're going to find out what scarcity looks like real quick. And I know Nanimo, he mentioned that, I believe, uh, when I was on his um, show a few weeks ago. And thanks again, uh, you weren't on Nanimo when uh, I thanked you again for having me on. That I think he even mentioned that uh, when we were talking that, you know, we don't know what's, well, I shouldn't say we, uh, I'm not sure the market understands what the scarcity is going to look like. <clears throat> so I think that's going to be interesting. And getting back to what uh, Joe had mentioned that I think yeah, whatever people thinks about Coinbase, I think is really irrelevant. I think um, the, uh, the, the, the American market needs an easy on-ramp. And I've said this in tweet and posts. <clears throat> I've also said this on uh, Nanimo's uh, show. I said it on my uh, my other spaces that we need an easy on ramp. And you know, I I helped um, about a month ago or a month month and a half ago. I helped a, a good friend of mine who owns his own investment firm. So he's no dummy. He owns Bitcoin. He owns Ethereum. He owns other cryptos. And I, I'm on the phone with him, FaceTime, and I'm walking him through how to go. Through Coinbase, through Simple Swap, that's a swap we use, and back to his and setting up a wallet, and then showing him how to stake it. Right, so staking is one thing that's easy. You can call someone and say, "Hey, just go in your wallet and you know, uh, click on your uh, Guardian node, or here, here's some here's some providers that you can get for an uh, the Elite Edge node and get the summary." But to go through all those hoops, it's really difficult for people who have no idea what they're doing. And it may not be as difficult as some people say, we're like, oh, you know, it's not that hard, but I, I don't, difficulty is one thing. It's the trust, right? They trust enough to use Coinbase to buy whatever they want to buy, right? And we know they're using it because they know how to use it, right? But then you go in, you say, because my friend even said, he's like, do you trust this? I said, I said to him, I said, I put a significant amount of money through this and I've never lost a dollar doing it. So I said, I trust it. Now, I can't guarantee when you put it through, everything's going to work perfect because then, you know, then it happens. But I told him, I said, you will not have a problem. And he didn't. I think the whole the whole thing went through in about 10 minutes through coin, or I'm sorry, through simple swap. But it's just the on-ramp that we need. It's not so much the Coinbase listing because uh, Joe's right. I don't, I think it would help. I don't think it's going to hold back the price. Um I don't think it's also going to hurt the price, right? Or hold back or hurt the price, right? I mean, people are going to buy it anyway. I mean, you got the whole rest of the world. I mean, I don't know. I forget what the whole U.S. population is compared to the world, what, 4% or something? I don't even know. But um, it's just easier for U.S. investors. And I think when you get the U.S. investors involved, you get a lot of buzz, right? You get, um, you get the buzz from the retail market. You get the buzz from the traders. You get the buzz from everyone. The traders probably know about it who want to get into it, but it's just a hassle of it. So that's what I want to say, Joe. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you before. I just wanted to throw that in there. It's just, we need an easy on-ramp because you're also paying fees for it, right? It would, I don't know if it's 1%. I forget what the fees are through Simple Swap, but it's still, it's still percent you're paying. But when you're putting a lot of large money through it, that adds up, you know, and you can write it off. I get the whole thing, but I mean, it's just so much easier just to go through um, what we don't have. Well, I think, could you have bought it on Binance, but you couldn't get it off? Is that what it was? Does anybody know? Well, when we had, you know, what was it, you know, uh, Binance America or whatever, and I think, you know, they got kicked out because yeah. they didn't pay their dues to the FEC. That's what I think it was. But, uh, yeah, I, it, and it's just, you know, probably not the right term, a little street cred, you know, to be on Coinbase. You know? And supposedly a lot of institutions are using Coinbase, uh, you know, to hold – manage their uh, 
you know, hold or will Bitcoins. So that gives a little bit of credibility as well. But uh, yeah, I think that would, you know, really pump the price and make it, e you know, easier exit, you know, on ramp and exit ramp. And that's another big deal about the institutions and uh, the ETS. Uh, B bottom line, they could probably really care less necessarily about the price uh, as they are the number of clients that are going, you know, going in and coming out. You know, they're going to be the, you know, you know, how much fees are they making, you know, entering and exiting, so on and so forth, uh, each one. And my argument is, is that once they get a taste of Bitcoin, why wouldn't you just like? Uh, uh, Bios, why would you then come up with uh, uh, Amazon Prime? I mean, a lot of people go, well, you know, he's made enough money off of uh, Amazon. Why does he have to do Amazon Prime? Well, it's kind of a not the best analogy, but why wouldn't they add a, um, you know, a, I don't know, Bitcoin Cash, ETF, Litecoin, ETF, you know, just as examples, and maybe a, even a small basket of all coins. ETF, okay? Because uh, a lot of people, even right now, with the prices of Bitcoin right this second, you know, just under 64000 you know, uh, not too many, you know, middle class or even upper, upper middle class uh, Americans can go in there and buy a whole Bitcoin. Uh, you know, they can Bitcoin Cash, for example, uh, which, you know, and then definitely a bunch of these altcoins. Well, speaking of the altcoins, like you were saying earlier, which is true, I think a lot of this could be a good rinsing out cycle because who remembers the Netscapes, you know, during the uh, tech boom in the 90s? You know, Netscape, if I got the story right, uh, was one type of <coughs> approach to buy Google. And they go, oh, you know, Google's no competition. Why we want to, you know, buy them? And, you know, you know the rest of the story. Uh, and I think we're going to see that with a lot of these altcoins, you know, people will gravitate. More and more news comes out of who's real, who's not, uh, what text is being used day to day uh, that, you know, people really need. More importantly, what big corporations uh, need. Uh, then, you know, people make up, you know, their own minds. And then, as I was saying about the FOMO, which is, you know, like Mother Nature is undefeated, when these things start running, I mean, that's why, you know, a lot of money goes in there. And uh, one way of judging that, uh, you know, if you want to kind of look now, and there should be a little blue or purple, I don't know if you're not colorblind like I am, the right-hand corner, you can click on it, and there's a, it's labeled Total 3. And what that is, is the market cap of crypto, but, but specifically it kicks out Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's just kind of the little guys. And you can see on there, uh, you know, we made a real good move, you know, basically a measure move, moved up, came back in, uh, you know, a slight pullback, and then another big run up. And that's the, I think that's the daily chart I put on there. But anyway, what I'm getting at, you can kind of verify, and it would, you know, maybe reinforce uh, your belief, you know, in the coin that you're, you know, holding or potentially holding, that it, too, is getting uh, some money coming into it because you can look and say, okay, we got a green total three today. My coin's green. Okay, it must be getting a little piece of the action, you know, the other of the capitalization coming in. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, double test there. And then... Um, you know, I'm not, you know, shilling it or whatever, but did a YouTube video earlier today that I posted, and, uh, you know, it kind of explains uh, kind of some, you know, and I've learned this by experience, okay? <laughs> Every mistake you can make, I've made at least twice, because, you know, it takes me longer to learn things. But especially in 2017, coming off the stock market, thought of kind of slick coming in here and during the did I say 16 2017 uh, you know came into the market anyway and just like a lot of other people my mindset was well man you know Bitcoin's too high uh, I think I'm gonna get a better 
return on investment, you know, from one of these altcoins, and one of the more popular ones that seem to have, you know, um, you know, a good community behind it, tech, so on and so forth, was Litecoin. Okay, so anyway, uh, trading it, and there were times, you know, you uh, get in the market or sell because of like a potential pullback and you wake up the next morning and it's run and so technically you've lost coins and then you'd have to get back in anyway uh not that you can't trade it but uh, you gotta be real normal real quick and i think this is more of this period of time for the average person you know that's dealing with a family career you know a million other things in their life um for the next for this upcoming cycle uh, not financial advisor i like the easiest simplest you know least stress, stressful way of handling it just maybe you know buy it you know easier to send down but you know buy on the dip so to speak and yeah i'll expect huge pullbacks because bitcoin only has you know 20 25 30 percent pullbacks uh during uh this bull market uh so if it's 20 25 30 percent these all coins could be you know you know double that uh in percent pullbacks okay which is going to freak a lot of people out they're you know it's just all psychology i think your mental toughness is is more important than your technical ability to be able to trade you know to market you know just staying with it and what i mean by that you know, it's, you know, you sell that profit and you see it slowly melting away like a snowman and you want to get out, uh, which is absolutely nothing wrong with taking profit, you know, at all. Uh, but, you know, just try to do it in a, you know, a method that, uh, you know, keeps you from losing coins, you know, if it all of a sudden runs out. And another thing, most importantly, uh, not financial advice, but just common sense, I would not go 100% in or 100% out. Uh, that's the best way to get totally wrecked is going 100% in, I mean 100% out, you know, on these pullbacks. Well, it's pulling back, so I would take everything out, you know, buy lower, you know, double the number of coins I have. Uh, yeah, that might work out, you know, once in a million, uh, but that's, you know, even for folks that have been in a while, that's kind of, tough to do uh and i'm you know basically i'm saying saying but not saying hodl uh but i don't want that to be a permanent mindset because there's going to come a day that you are going to have to start scaling out you know maybe 10 percent of the time that you know uh 15 20 percent whatever your you know risk management is and uh i don't know i'd you know, saying this in public, but you know, <laughs> again, let me, let me get the disclaimer. You know, I'm not financial advice, but I think you know we'll be 90% safe unless we get a black swan event to hold um, from this having for about a year till April, you know, uh, March, April, May uh, 2025, and then at that point, uh, maybe. Instead of looking at a weekly chart, maybe go to a three-day or a daily chart and uh, start, you know, being real nimble and watching, uh, you know, the pullbacks and stuff. Now, we could run a lot further, um, in other words, time-wise. I'm not really so much worried about the price. The price took care of itself. I want to time, and we we're pretty good at, time the market, time you know, when's the top, you know, when is this thing going to start defaulting and, uh, you know, all the, like a wet dish rag, all the water, all the money is wrung out of it when I start, because that's, that's the most important thing, it, you know, in my mindset. Now, speaking of, you know, price predictions, uh, if you're not following him, he's a sharp guy with the numbers, kind of funny, uh, British kind of crazy name, British Hoddle. Uh, give him a follow. And that's how I got this information. And this is on the conservative side. He gave a, a, uh, a higher projection. But this is on the very conservative side. That's the way I want to play this. And he's just 
based on the numbers of the amount of millions of uh, dollars uh, buying up, I don't know, I forget how much Bitcoin per day. Um, he's estimating uh, $160,000 Bitcoin uh, by the end of 2024. And then with my Bro science, you know, <laughs> with math, that gave us just a little over a $40 uh, theta, which is not, you know, out of the world. I think that's probably, you know, conservative, probably, you know, very, very you know, realistic. And in my opinion, that's without any news. That's without Coinbase, without any uh, partnerships being, you know, uh, brought out. Uh, exposed, whatever, and anything else that uh, Fado might do. And also, on the low side, uh, this guy that does, you know, I mean, that's at this point kind of his life figuring out, you know, what's going on with Bitcoin, the money flow in, the amount of Bitcoin being pulled, you know, uh, pulled out of the market, so on and so forth, you know, 160,000. Uh, the other number was uh, as much as three. Over three hundred thousand, but I thought it was a little far fetched. But you know, I never would have thought we would be floating with all time highs uh, this close to the having. So you know, I'd rather you know shoot at a target that's you know I'd rather you know being a country guy, I'd rather <laughs> take a shot at a deer for a conservative you know uh, lethal you know ethical hit. And something, you know, uh, way out there, kind of a moonshot, so to speak. But uh, anyway, I don't want to ramble on. I, I know there's people out here that, that, that have some great knowledge that, uh, you know, have something to say. Man, just hit that heart, raise your hand, we'll get you up here on stage, and uh, we can go from there. Russian Jerry, would you want to make a comment on something? Hey brother, how are you? How are you guys doing today? Um, Good. Great speech, by the way. Um, I just have a quick question: How are you guys um, buying Theta? Um, I used to buy it through uh, Binance, through uh, IP Vanish, um, through a European Binance. But um, obviously, right now, it's, I can't put in money inside of it. Um, so, what I've been doing is I've just been buying T Fuel through uh, Crypto.com, and then kind of going back into my wallet and swapping it, or doing it on SimpleSwap.io. Uh, but I've kind of noticed that they've been charging me a lot of fees for doing things like that. So I was just wondering if there's a better way of kind of putting my money into Theta than just doing through simple swap or swapping coins. Are you are you in Europe? Is that where you're at? No, no, no I'm in Miami, Florida. Okay, all right. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I was just talking, you may have missed it right before I came on. I had mentioned that, um, <clears throat> you know, people were giving Joe some shit about Coinbase and it's, not, it's needed. We need easy on-ramps and I use simple, simple swap. I've never had a problem with it, and I, I spoke to exactly what you were saying before that, you know, they're feeing you on it too. So you have the fee from Coinbase, you got the fee from Simple Swap, and uh, that's how I'm buying it. Uh, I don't know. And I mean, there's some other swaps you can do, but uh, there's really no way to get around it at this point. I did see in the comments it was by. Uh, shit, I missed it. Um, uh, who. Um, Rooks. He wrote, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Who was it? Um, oh, Zipperfly. He said, after removing it, Theta's quietly back on Binance US again. I didn't check it out yet, so I don't know, but that's what somebody had mentioned. Um, but uh, the swaps are the only way I know how to really get them, unless you, I don't know. If anybody has a comment on a better way to do it, um, please feel free to put your hand up. But that's where I, and I understand what you're saying. It's a drag. Uh, and my other question is: Is uh, what's the better coin to swap for, for for Theta or for T Fuel? Because um, I've I've put like five grand in USDC, and I've noticed the fee was much bigger than if I were to do just Bitcoin or Ethereum. So, is there really a better coin to kind of trade in for Theta? That I don't know. I've never I don't I've never done that research. Um, maybe somebody else could speak to that, but uh, that I don't know. Yeah, those are excellent questions. What I <clears throat> might be totally wrong, but uh, what I'm doing is uh, uh, this Coinbase uh, XLM because it's really fast and you know the cheap coin. But anyway, uh, cheapest in price, not 
you know, they, <laughs> but and then uh, pushing it over to Exodus, and then doing my swap on Exodus, and then putting it back on my uh, Theta uh, wallet. So I mean, there, there's you know a hundred different ways to do it, but anyway. I don't know how we all got, can anybody hear me? I don't know how we all got muted. I didn't do that. Oh, there, wait. Can, any, can uh, Joe, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah. I don't know how that, I didn't, I didn't even touch it. Um, I don't know how that happened. Sorry. Got you. I appreciate for the answers. Um, uh, last question is, is um, I see that um, Latvia been, been going up as well as like T drop. Um, I did get my uh, airdrop in because I've been stacking Theta uh, since it was close to ten dollars. <laughs> Best in a lot of it been down a lot, uh, but I do trust uh, the tech and um, I feel better investing my money into Theta network than into uh, Pepe or all these frog meme coins that they could be you know forty percent down in a day. Um, so I think I'm in the right position, um, and I do like the Theta community. Um, I haven't had a single person on Twitter or anything say bad things about Theta. Um, the thing I also like about Theta is the fact that um, we're backed by a lot of uh, patents, uh, which I don't see a lot of cryptocurrency um, projects do. Um, so I do like that uh, aspect as well of Theta. Uh, I think Levita is has some very interesting tech. Um, they're... There's more into there's more to what I'm going to say, but just overall, you know, they're trying to get everyone's medical records anonymously and put them into a database. So, if people, this is just one instance that I understand it. Um, you know, there's different ailments and diseases and everything else, and I guess they try to take all of that data and look for maybe different remedies, cures. I'm not saying they're curing things. I'm saying they're try trying to put the data together to analyze what it looks like with what people have, right? So um, the idea is to be able to get to access that information anonymously. It's not tied to anybody and see what that looks like. And Mitch put out a tweet or a post um, not too long ago, I mean, within the past few days, I think. And he said something about Levita being one of the largest companies in the world using AI technology to be able to get data on people's medical records and do some different analysis on helping people and, you know, going along those lines. Um, I did get airdropped um, my Levita as well. Um, I probably should, and I want to have the spaces. One, I want to have the spaces on NFTs and I want to have the spaces on um, chains as well, the, the companies on the chains. I've just been really focused on Edge Cloud. Um, I think Levita is going to be huge. I think FedML is going to be huge too. Um, I, from what I understand, they might have it. They're, they're are they coming out with a chain on Theta? I know they're. I know they're working with them. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but um, <clears throat> I know. Uh, I do think Levita is going to be really important down the road. Um, but who knows? Things could change. The company could change. I don't know. But um, I like Levita. I do. I've just been caught up with the edge cloud so much and the edge nodes. And I think, in my personal opinion, that's what's going to drive um, data into everything. Um, they realize, and I had mentioned this on past spaces too, that <clears throat> they, Mitch, um, realized that, you know, there is a little bit of a, um, um, a buffer of getting the chains on. It was a little, I shouldn't say buffer. It's a little bit, he, did, he thought it was going to be a little bit more easy to get the people to get their own chains going and they realize it may have changed their business model and they don't think their business model is broken, which it is. Um, and I think they're realizing that because of the streaming wars that Andrea Barry puts out. Um, <clears throat> they're trying to figure out how to, you know, secure um, everyone's username and, or, you know, their, their sign-ons and not share them, right? And they and they had to f uh, figure that problem out and solve it through NFT DRMs. Um, but I think there's there's a little bit more probably that has to go into getting people on the chains. And I think once they realize that Theta is powering 
a lot of AI jobs all over the world at a cheaper rate on a software company and open the eyes up everybody. I think that's going to open up a lot of doors to their NFT market, to their meta chain, to a lot of other things. Uh, I know somebody was, uh, I don't know, cursing somebody out on one of my feeds. Maybe they're cursing me. I don't even know. Cause I just kind of ignored it, but they're saying, you know, you know, they pivoted, they, they can't stick to something. They went to NFTs. They went to, I, I, I completely disagree with that. I couldn't disagree with that even more. Um, they locked up the NFT, uh, you know, for their chain and they got it out and they got some players on it. Yeah. It, it, the community has to build this. They can't build everything, right? They're building the infrastructure for this. They have to, people will get on board on this. I mean, NFT, I think people were, I think people were beaten up over NFTs, to be honest with you, from the last bull market to this bull market. They think they're JPEGs and they're, they're, they're worth nothing. There's no utility behind them. I think a lot of people are just beat up over it. And when they, when they see there's real utility and take, the um, take the Knights, Las Vegas Knights, right? I mean, you got Theta Edge Cloud plastered all over the arena. Um, I'm sure they're going to work out NFT deals for certain merchandising or something's going to happen out of that. Um, and they're, they're the, the, the first hockey team to win, I think, 300 games the fastest. They're Stanley Cup champions. The owner of that company owns a number of other different uh, sports organizations. So I think it's just a matter of time. The technology is so early. And people want this, like, you know, like yesterday, uh, the investors or the people who want to do whatever with it just want the price to go up, even if they're not investors or holding just a dump. Um, they have to realize this, this is world-changing technology that's being worked out and really, I don't know, since 2018, maybe a little bit before when they had Sliver TV. But they're working all this out. And <clears throat> I've made the comments a number of times on posts and even on my spaces saying, hey, listen, you know, I've worked with IT teams on building building out financial structures for companies, and I feel like it's something that it's not difficult. And I'm like, man, this just seems so easy. Why is this taking so long to get out of data? And you're, you have a company building something for the entire world to use on a network that works, and they're all intertwined, and they're with the biggest players in the world. I mean, that's something that doesn't happen overnight. I think what they're doing, they're moving at light speed, if you ask me. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who disagree with that, but... I would, lo I would love to talk to somebody about that and say, how would you do it faster? You know, I mean, this just takes time. I mean, NVIDIA started, what, 10 years ago, maybe even a little bit more. But Jensen was saying, you know, AIs. that he put a bet on it, man. He put a bet saying AI is going to change the world. I am going to be the person to uh, put the hardware out for this and to make it run. And he put a bet on it. And he won. He won big time. So, you know, I mean, he started that at least 10 years ago and look to see where that is 10 years later. And he's got the whole market wrapped up. They can't even buy his equipment fast enough. He can't even, they can't even make it fast. They're out of chips. You know, they, they, can't get the, they can't get the infrastructure, the hardware infrastructure out fast enough. They're back ordered. People want this. And for people to say, you know, they is pivoting, they is not doing this, you're not fast enough. I think they have to understand what they're invested in. That's just my opinion. Um, and, and, you know, I, I see some people um, posting things about certain, and just not, not on my stuff, just in there. I read a lot, you know, and I see what they're posting. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I don't even think you know what you're invested in, you know, and you get that. And, you, you know, and this will get back to Russian German in a second, you know, when, the, when you don't understand, and not what he said, nothing to do with what he said, just in general about, you know, um, you know, asking if there's a better on-ramp other than swaps, you know, or whatever, however people are buying it in the United States. You need it. I, I, think, I think in America you need it. And it's not to push the price up. It would help the price, I'm sure. It's not going to hold it back. But you need those easy on-ramps, right? And it's the same thing with the theta technology, right? You have to get people to understand, one, what they're invested in, two, the creator and the content people who want to be on theta network have to understand, okay, this is what I got to do. If I want to run a chain, I th it may have changed, but I think it's now 14,000 theta tokens put up for collateral. You could have your own blockchain, right? So now it's probably about 28, almost more, right? It's, uh, th say, I'll say three bucks. Say it's almost 30 grand to run your own chain, right? But these are people who want to start a real business, have a real use case, have real to tokenize their companies, right? And... So it's a lot. It's a lot being thrown at everybody at once. And when, and I mean everybody, meaning investors, content creators, uh, uh, people who want to make NFTs, 
people who want to run a company, anything like that. It's a lot and say, listen, this technology is here. It's so early, but how do I get involved with it? What am I going to do with it? And don't rush it because the first time you rush anything, and I'm not a tech guy, I'm a finance guy, but I've worked with tech and I've built out stuff with tech people. The first time you start rushing it, it doesn't go well. And I know there's a lot of people upset with um, uh, when they push back mainnet 3.0 April 21, I think it was April was supposed to come out, whenever it was, that time, that time, the, people were upset. And, you know, I would rather have them pull back and put it out properly than be like Solana. And I'm not going to trash Solana. I'm not trashing Solana at all. But you don't want your blockchain to continuously go down. And I know Theta had a little issue with the blockchain, but they said it was because they were testing something. They had it back up and running. There's been no issues. It didn't affect a lot of the chains at all. So, you know, maybe it was a good learning thing to say, hey, listen, you know, there was a little bit of an issue. It went down. Go ahead, Joe. It went down, and um, we got it back up, but it didn't affect anybody. You going to say something, Joe? Oh, yeah. I was going to insert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Fighter Nero has been sold to another company, and also we never had any lawsuits on us. Uh, just Or our developers never had lied to us about, you know, the burn rate, so on and so forth. Just saying. I agree with that. And I think I'm really excited for the, the launch as well because they, uh, I'm looking to see what this pricing is going to look like on these, excuse me, on these jobs. Um, that's really, really going to be, I think that's really going to be a catalyst for the company as well, right? Because they're going to say, listen, not only are we launching, here's our pricing model. The people who are running any edge node from 10,000 T fuel all the way up to half a million you know, here's the jobs they're doing, what the pricing is going to look like. I'm really interested in what that's, and maybe they'll put it up before. I don't know. I know I re reached out to one of the Theta, um, I can't pronounce it, um, Gianone, I think his name is. Uh, I had asked him, and he said they haven't, they haven't, they're going to work, they're working on it, right? And that's, that's fine. But I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what the pricing is going to look like, because that's going to be another catalyst to say, hey, listen, currently in the market, um, it's a it's a new market, you know. The pricing looks like it's going to be X Y Z, you know, and it gives some it gives everybody an idea who are running. Maybe they're running a computer at home, or they bought up uh, Nvidia hardware, and they're using the hardware, and they downloaded the edge nodes on the hardware, and they're a community provider, and they provide you know staking for the community members, and they're saying you know it's costing me money to do this, and it's costing everybody money too now. Wow, this is where I'm at. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not saying this is going to be the pricing for Theta Edge Cloud. I'm going to be very clear about that. But I saw something. I, a couple people in Theta posted it. And I saw it. Uh, that I think they said the profit on one of the NVIDIA hardware was like $190,000 for what they're running. There's a lot of cost in that too. Don't get me wrong. But it was something I was like, wow. And I haven't even had a chance to check that out or look into it. There's a guy, um, I think he's called the uh, the AI investor. I follow him. He puts out a lot of great information. I think he was the original guy that put that post up. Uh, he has a lot. He puts out a lot of good information. He's just strictly like Nivity and AI. But, um, you know, I, I use a lot of these guys who... I'm assuming he's a tech guy. Maybe he seems pretty financial. I mean, he does a lot of uh, modeling, it seems like. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's more of a finance guy. Maybe he's both. Who knows? But anyway, I, I, I look out to find these people who are in the AI world and see what this looks like. And now, you know, it really reconfirmed about what I thought about Theta two years ago, a year ago, and even now. When you have Elon Musk, you have Jensen from NVIDIA, you have um, all these players <clears throat> talking about just what what they're buying and what they're developing for AI and Theta is going to be a part of that. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be very, very interesting to watch. Um, if anybody has any more comments, questions, concerns, raise your hand. Uh, if not, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, Joe, if you want to say anything more. Oh, just a big, you know, shout out. Appreciate everybody, you know, coming out and the input and uh, appreciate you know you Joe for you know putting this on and and for your uh, 
knowledge and people sharing. So yeah, I feel real good about it. And I don't know, maybe in a few weeks, um, you know, we'll come back and kind of see where we are and see, you know, hopefully some things have, you know, started, you know, popping off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love, I'd love to do this on a weekly basis, but like I said, I don't want to keep saying the same stuff over and over again, but it just seems like, <clears throat> you know, we have, the, just the information you coming out, a lot of it's the same because a lot of us know it, but I also like to put this out too and kind of like, you know, say what we spoke about in the past because, you know, we want new people to be involved in this too because it, it it's, there's there's an investor side, there's a community side, there's an NFT side, there's content creators, there's businesses and, you know, people come on here and ask questions or just listen and they can understand it. So a lot of it might be redundant sometimes and I apologize for that, but at least it gets people understanding or maybe maybe it may not be redundant maybe people just aren't you know i'm really into this right like i'm really invested into it i follow it, i'm into it and maybe if i can give my opinion on what i think the clarity would be or something like that if anything helps out that's kind of just why i like doing this but i like talking about it because i think it's just really interesting uh technology and it's changing the world it's going to change the world whether People, whatever people think about AI, it's good, bad, or indifferent, it's going to change the world. And I think being a part of it, and we're in so early, and we understand the technology, I think it's a lot of fun, and that's why I just like to do it. So I would like to do it every week if I could, but again, I don't want to be too redundant and get people bored and lost in it, but, you know, I was doing it every other week, and maybe I'll keep it that way, but like Joe says, man, this shit blows off <laughs> this week, I'll probably definitely be, you know, hey guys, come on, let's just talk about the, the run on it, but you never know. You never know, right, Joe? <laughs> Oh, exactly. No, I, no, sir. I think every few weeks, you know, um, you know, we don't want to, you know, saturate people and right. and whatnot. You know, unless there's a, you know, a real reason to to meet. You know, just like with a corporation. You know what I'm saying? All those stupid, you know, meetings and Zoom meetings that you really don't need to to be in. But anyway, but That's yeah, right. it's, it's a great space. It's, I mean, I think you're the the first to do it, um, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I appreciate you, you know, putting the effort in and, and making it happen. Well, I actually started, to be honest with you, really quick, I don't, I'm not going to give you guys too much time, but I, I actually started because I was like, man, I just want to hear what other people were thinking on it. Or, like, at least, even if you, even if you don't want to speak, you don't have to speak, but, you know, people, you know, post stuff, hey, Joe, you know, this, uh, it's just good. I just want to get people talking and thinking about it because people might even ask me questions that I don't even, I haven't even thought of or, or I may not know, and I'll look into it. So it's always just good to keep an open conversation, and you know, just and it's a lot of fun because uh, the Russian Russian German he he hit it, man. There's a lot of great people in this community. Um, most of the people are really helpful, very nice, uh, willing to you know just help out people, and that's what I really like about it. It's not uh, I'm not bashing people who are younger because I invested when I was younger and I followed it and I liked investing, but you know. Um, you, 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 you say that you don't have like a lot of just a lot of um, people looking for a pump and dump on a meme coin. You know, you get people who are really into this and understand a lot of tech guys in this. Um, I talk to a lot of tech guys and they're really great people. And um, they, you know, they have great questions and um, I learn a lot from them, you know. So it's just a lot of fun. And Mr. Theta Fuel, Theta and Fuel, welcome. I just want to say hi to you. We're always tweeting or posting back and forth. So there's others on here too. I just he just is almost right next to me. That's why I said it. But um, I could probably see what probably have the people in here. But I appreciate everybody who comes on, everyone who follows, everyone who participates, everyone who you know likes, retweets, uh, comments on my my stuff. I really appreciate it. And you know, hopefully when this uh, bull market really starts ripping, we can we'll have a huge crowd in here and we'll have. Uh, the uh, the originals on here. Bimo will talk to everybody and say, "Yeah, <laughs> we may have got this one right." <laughs> so, but go ahead. Yeah, last question, brother. Um, is it still uh, time to DCA into uh, crypto right now, or we're because I mean I've I've been in crypto for the last four or five years, and obviously it's been a, a big down uh, market since it was up to fifteen dollars. Um, but it looks like it, at this moment in time, sometimes it's better to just buy a little bit higher than your initial um, price prediction versus just sitting out in the sidelines and seeing the thing just keep going up and up and up. 
Well, be honest with you, I don't give financial advice, even dollar cost averaging. Um, I know Joe watches charts, and he, you know, so I don't know if, and I'm not putting him on the spot to say anything, by the way, but um, I don't give financial advice out like that, but um, I know Joe educates people how to read charts, so if he wants to make a comment, he's obviously more than welcome to. I can't stop him from saying anything, but um, again, I don't give financial advice for anything like that. I just try to give research advice and what my opinion on, I think, what the what the company itself would do. Yeah, just the only thing I can talk to is what, you know, I'll be doing. Uh, just honestly looking forward to those uh, pullbacks. The deeper, the better. And uh, just, you know, reloading the, uh, uh, you know, not reloading because I'm not going to sell any, but that's just me. You know, just, you know, stacking more uh, as much as I can. And then, you know, the closer we get to, um, April of 2025, uh, probably, probably fourth quarter this year, you know, I'll probably just, you know, pull in the reins and then you start watching for, you know, um, you know, potential areas to, uh, start scaling out, uh, lightly at first and then heavier. Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, Bitcoin, if it gets, you know, with all the ETFs and all the, you know, possibly altcoin ETFs coming in and so on and so forth, man, this snowball could run a lot further um, than we anticipate, you know, based on prior, um, you know, havings. And really, that's all that we have to go on. But uh, recently, even with Bitcoin, it's been following the chart. A lot of people say, um, you, know, te- you know, throw tentacles out or whatever. Uh, but if you've been a Patreon member, or even as much as I can share on, on X, uh, you know, been a lot of things we've been, you know, kind of sort of, you know, in the ballpark there. So, uh, anyway, I'll just <laughs> kind of leave it at that, you know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the, you know, again, thanks for everybody coming out. And, you know, every few weeks or, or whenever we can get, you know, Joe back up here, we'll get it going again. Thank you for your opinion, brother. Um, I will definitely be setting up my notifications. So next time you guys do go live in this space, I'll be joining you first thing. That's great, man. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. All right. If nobody else has anything, I guess we'll uh, we'll head out for the night. Keep watching it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun coming up, guys. And uh, I'm definitely going to have one way, probably quite a few before May 1st. But again, May 1st is where it's at. So thanks again for coming out. Uh, I appreciate it, and thanks again for the follows, the likes, and all all of the interaction between you guys. It means a lot. So have a wonderful night. Have a great week, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon.